Hi Matrix, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at essay questions in particular. This is a paper 2 essay question. How best to break the question down, how to um, answer it clearly, how to set it up, what's the best practice, the best style, the best structure for a final paper essay question. So this particular essay question, I'm going to let you read through it now and if you want an opportunity to pause the video and at least attempt to answer this question before we get into it, please do so now. But other than that, I'm going to go through the question, break it up into its pieces and then I'm going to put the memo up at the end like I normally do. Okay, so let's break up this particular essay question. This question is from a paper two and it is focusing in on our knowledge around um, natural selection and speciation. So the question says differentiate, which is an important question word for us to know, means to tell the difference between a population and a species. Then it goes on to ask you to describe speciation by geographic isolation and then explain how speciation and extinction affect biodiversity. So there's a lot of components to this essay. And I want to bring your attention in particular to how the essay is broken up. It is broken up into 17 marks of content and 3 for synthesis. Now, just so that you're aware, these 17 marks need to be roughly allocated to each one of these um, topics that we've highlighted in our question. And I want to show you how best to do this in an exam setting where you're not sure how much each question should get. Should you write five marks for everything or three marks? What's the best um, approach and strategy. I'm going to break that down for you now as well. The other thing that I want to point out to you that perhaps you're not aware of is what do these three synthesis marks actually mean on the side here? And so in synthesis, there are three categories that you need to keep in mind that the marker will use to mark your essay. And they are as follows. So the first one is relevance. Relevance means does everything that you have uh, described in your essay, is it relevant? Did you stay on topic or did you dip your toe into a different topic? Did you by accident start talking about something else that has no relevance to the topic of the question? And I'm going to apply that to this particular question when we go through how to answer it best. The second synthesis point is logic. In other words, did you logically answer this question? In other words, if you look at the structure of the question, did you answer it in the correct order? So in this instance, on this question, did you start off with the differentiation between population and species, and then did you go into your description question later on? Last but not least is comprehensive. Now this is quite a difficult one to break down simply because the comprehensive mark changes depending on the type of question that they have asked. Effectively what it means is have you comprehensively answered the question? And generally how this works is they will allocate a maximum total of marks for different parts of the question. Let's say, for example, they are asking you, like in this one, to differentiate between a population and a species. And perhaps the maximum mark that they are going to award for those two words is a maximum out of four. In other words, they cannot give you more than four marks for differentiating between those two words. So, in order to be comprehensive, you generally need to get at least 50% of that mark. So, two out of four. But you have to be comprehensive over the entire question and applying it to this essay question, that means that you would need to at least have 50% of comprehensive content answering the um, basics within this essay. So let's get into actually how we're going to write this. So in life sciences exams and in their essays, you don't need a introduction and you don't need a conclusion. I know that's best practice, that's what we learn in English and in other languages, but in life sciences it's not necessary, you're not going to receive any extra marks for doing that, it's not going to impact your synthesis mark either. So the first paragraph that I would write in this essay is going to circulate around population and species. 
And effectively what you're going to have to do is you must define both of these words and then isolate what is different between the two. Roughly, I would say that in the memo, this is going to award anywhere between two to four marks of the overall 17 for content. The second paragraph or the second part of this essay is going to surround um, the description of speciation. So in particular, it's asking us to describe speciation by geographic isolation. So what we need to do is we actually need to give a definition of speciation. And remember, we are describing here, which means we need to include some key links. We need to describe speciation on how it happens, why it happens, when it happens, and finally, where speciation occurs. Now, in particular, this is asking for geographical speciation, so that does give us the where. This is going to be actually one of the biggest parts of your essay. It's going to be effectively the biggest paragraph that you will write, as there is the most content that you can cover. There's no specific animal that they're using here, so please don't use any examples. It's not necessary. If you use an example, you could possibly lose the relevance mark as well, which we don't want. They want you to describe speciation in a very general way. The third and final paragraph that you are going to need to write is you need to explain how speciation and extinction affect biodiversity. Now, they are there asking an explanation question, and we mustn't forget that when we explain, effectively, it's a simpler version of describe. This time, we are just doing the why and the how. In other words, you need to describe why speciation affects biodiversity and how it affects biodiversity. You'll do the same with extinction. Why does it affect biodiversity and how does it affect biodiversity? If I were to do a mark allocation for this, to take our 17 and divide it between these three topics, I feel that our first question would probably be out of a maximum of four marks. Four being what I would think would be the minimum amount of marks that they possibly would award to this, but they probably would award up to six marks. In other words, there's a possibility that um, they might do three marks for each definition, and generally definitions are out of three. For the speciation paragraph, it is definitely the biggest part of our essay, the body of our essay. So I would allocate roughly eight marks to this paragraph. There's definitely a lot that you can say. Last but not least, where you had to explain speciation and extinction, I wouldn't allocate more than four to three marks, roughly, to this topic, perhaps two each. Now I know that this gives us a total of 18 and effectively I've been over generous and you want to be over generous um, in some sense with your information because you want to make sure that you have correctly and adequately answered the question. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to post the memo so that we can see how they would have answered this question and we can see where our um, essay hints overlap with what I've given some guidance on. Right, here is our essay and as you can see, like I mentioned earlier, they have themselves divided it into three separate paragraphs. They haven't given us their max uh, total, but what they have done is they have told us what they have given marks for and they've obviously located the mark. Um, by giving it a little tick with a letter next to it. I want you to notice just a couple of important things. You will notice that the mark or the tick is not always at the end of a sentence. And that is because sometimes what happens is they're actually marking terminology. In other words, um, if we just look at the very first paragraph, all of these 
sentences seem to end with a tick at the end. And that might be a coincidence because generally these are the key terms that they are looking for. But if we look into the second paragraph, not all of the uh, uh, ticks are at the end of a sentence. If we look a little bit lower down, you will notice that some of the ticks are right in the middle of the sentence. And that's because they're looking for these key words. For example, cannot interbreed, independent, environmental condition. In other words, they're looking for these terms that make your sentence relevant. So you don't get a mark per sentence, you get a mark per concept. Now please have a look through this and see how many marks you perhaps have gotten. And then last but not least, you can see lower down here, they've given the synthesis breakdown. And what they've said here is you have at least four correct points for your first paragraph about the differences, at least five for the description of speciation, and at least two for the effects of speciation. And that then, if you've given those minimums, you can award yourself a comprehensive mark. If there is a logical sequence and that you have followed all the information from the um, question, you can give yourself a logical tick. And then last but not least, if all the information is relevant and you haven't spoken about anything that is not in the essay question, then you can give yourself a relevancy mark and that gives you a total out of 20. Now, guys, I hope that that really helps you prepare for your essays. I'm going to be uploading many more of these tricky exam questions, including many more essays, and I'll walk you through them. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting many more of these in the upcoming weeks, building up to the final exam. See you. Bye.